It's been a long month, but it's finally here. Chapter 53, and there's a lot to talk about. Let's do this. Bulma's recruited Krillin, and they mention Gohan is off at some college lecture, and they can't get a hold of Tien because he doesn't have a cell phone. I imagine Tien's third eye might not work well with uh, Face ID, so maybe Tien should sue for discrimination. I absolutely loved the shade they throw at Yamcha in this chapter. Krillin mentions to the others if they should contact him, and immediately in the next panel, they brush it off and no follow-up is ever brought up again. Just you wait, Lord Yamcha will be the one to defeat Moro, you heard it here first. So Jacko shows up and realized the men Piccolo captured already contacted Moro and they realize more of Moro's soldiers are on their way to Earth. We also find out that hit looking character is an artificial cyborg who goes by the name 73. Yeah, I don't like that name either. This is where we learn more about 73, and Jacko is telling us just how dangerous he really is. He mentions if 73 is able to grab someone from the back of the neck, he can copy all of their moves and power. We get a demonstration of this as they do a quick stop on a planet where 73 copies these hedgehog looking humanoids and is able to copy their moves. And sure enough, they have this one insanely powerful ability which lets them rip wormholes open basically and allows them to just jump through to different locations in the universe. Jacko mentions they have about 10 days before they show up and as soon as Krillin mentions he wants to get some training in, 7-3 and the others immediately show up on the lookout tower. Shimo Reko was ready to kill Pasta for being traitors to Moro, but Piccolo immediately stops him and this is when 7-3 immediately grabs Piccolo's neck and copies all of his moves. Now, I saw some confusion about his ability and I'm pretty sure he can only copy one person's ability at a time. He can't go grabbing Piccolo and then grab Krillin and use both of their abilities one after another. It definitely looks like the one power just gets overwritten when he copies a new user's abilities. Jacko even mentions he loses the user's abilities after 30 minutes, so I think this helps support the fact he's not constantly copying abilities and basically being Kakashi with a Shuringun gun using thousands of techniques. Now this does also leave the question, since they have teleported to Earth, and if he did lose the wormhole ability that lets them teleport, how do they plan on leaving Earth as they have no idea if Earth even has spacecraft technology. So 7-3 uses Piccolo's special beam cannon against him, right away missing Piccolo and blowing a hole right through the watchtower. He then uses Piccolo's arm stretching techniques and punches Jacko right off the watchtower, where Piccolo follows behind to save Jacko. Krillin also follows behind, but this is where the panda looking guy Yumba grabs Krillin, and mentions Krillin will be fighting him instead. I'm so, so excited for this fight. Whenever I get to see Krillin get time to shine, I'm always super pumped for it. I really do hope they show Yumba to be a good match versus Krillin, and obviously making it a pretty challenging, but a good fight nonetheless. But I do hope they give Krillin the win because the guy just deserves it. So Piccolo in 7-3, I'm getting so tired of that name. Anyway, they start exchanging blows and are evenly matched at this point, but Jacko mentions that 7-3 doesn't run out of stamina, so basically this is Piccolo vs Android 17 all over again. But I'm totally fine with it. Listen, I'll take what I can get when it comes to the other Z fighters getting time to shine, and this chapter is delivering on it completely. Unfortunately at this point, Piccolo is starting to slow down and not being able to keep up with the cyborg, and guess who shows up to save the day? That's right, it's our boy, the one and only Gohan. Piccolo gives him a rundown and mentions that Gohan is the strongest person on Earth at the moment, and Gohan obviously realized that meant Goku and Vegeta were off planet. So right now we have Piccolo and Gohan vs 7-3, we have Krillin fighting Yumba, and Jacko taking on Shimareka, 
and my theory is Jackal will be no match for Shimo, and this is where Tian will show up and possibly take over the fight to help Jacko out. I hope this happens because it would be so great to see Tian get some development as well. This chapter basically ends with a quick follow up to Miris and Goku's training. Goku is doubting he can achieve Ultra Instinct and Miris mentions that he have to fight as if it's life or death. In other words, Goku has to be ready to die during this training in order to unleash Ultra Instinct. Then we get a quick glimpse at Vegeta struggling with the Yajra training. The Yajra told Vegeta it took Goku 150 days to balance his spirit. I'm sure that was thrown in to show Vegeta learning spirit control in way less time than Goku and surpassing Goku's training, learning more than just instant transmission. I'm also loving the fact this chapter put very little focus on both Goku and Vegeta. It's gonna let us keep theory crafting what's next for them, but lets them keep training in the background while we get to focus on the much needed character development of the Z Fighters. This chapter went by so quick for me, but it nailed everything I was wanting and I can't wait for next month because I'm sure we will get to see more of Krillin against Yondu, which I won't lie is the part I'm looking forward to the most. I'm wondering if Krillin will show off his solar flare times 100 and take the win that way, or if he will show something new again, that would be pretty awesome. Also, I hope Piccolo continues fighting 7-3, and it's going to require both Gohan and Piccolo to take him down. So much to look forward to in Chapter 54, but that is all I have for this video. I will be releasing my top 5 Halloween anime series later this week, so if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Let me all know what you thought about this chapter in the comments below, and do you guys think Krillin will win against Yambu? Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in my next video.